Upstart Crow, Episode 1, Romeo, Romeo, where far art thou, Romeo? Sorry, Dad. How old is this sad weirdo supposed to be? May be 13, my sweet. Cool. Yeah, because I'm 13. Exactly. I thought it may be fun to hear my duet speak a true voice before this middle-aged man. The two half coconuts down his body gets hold of it. Didn't say stuff like this, Dad. Sounds like a complete turnip, yes, dear. Does this thy sweet and useful type? I would fain the he, not the monocybic monis- sense of grunts and passes for your conversation. Oh, what? I take a view, uh, having my romantic intrigue, say? Oh, sh- you, 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 uh, what's up, Romeo? You're so weird. Oh, shut up. I hate you. It wouldn't be slightly less effective than my own timeless poetry. Timeless is a word, word, as it feels like one goes on for bloody ever. Never giving it a chance. You've only seen Henry the Henry the Sixth, Part One. Part One. What do you mean? Is wrong? I mean, don't take this wrong that way, wrong way, son. But God is bored. I thought it was actually outside my own body, watching myself die. He sat there f- cracking his nuts in the blue quiet bits, which is shush him, but he would not be shushed. He's stubborn man, old wi- father, William. Stubborn common man, which is why he married me. Prospered love, a bit of rough. I married beneath me, and you've done me but the same, William. Uh, what's that supposed to mean? It means that he uh, was 17. he got a scheming little 26-year-old wilt maid farming. Slap up the duffin. That's what? Do you think? You're so posh, Mary Arden. Like you ain't sewing in, sewing into your winter snickers like everyone else. Who else? I'm going and trying to work. I've come from London to here to read my Juliet. Well, I'm not happy, doll. Burridge pays you as an actor, not a writer. I'm fine. I sent you words to the theatre. The two tunnels which you lie beneath the bridges to be blocked. Pardon? Two tunnels which you lie beneath the bridge be blocked. Two tunnels beneath a bridge. Anyone knows my lovers? Knows? I told Burbridge. I mean, knows is snotted. I would not work this week or not next. Why wouldn't you say? Why don't you just say knows? It's what I do now, saying again. All right, all right, I have to, if I have to. Romeo, Romeo. Well, I aren't Romeo. Dad, nobody t- talks like that. This is poetry. Sometimes I regret teaching you to read. I think you could be a little less flowery, love. I mean, why doesn't she just say, Where are you, Romeo? Because my love, it, does, it doesn't mean, It doesn't mean, Where are you? It means, Where are you, Romeo? That's a bit weird. Yeah. Romeo is, is just his name. Well, exactly. Just saying, Are you a member of the family that I hate? People would definitely think that you mean, Romeo, where are you? That's when I meant, when I thought I meant. Yeah, I think I did too. It's bloody obvious, I think. But clear, you're going to have to. So you do it, says Romeo, Romeo. Where well, are, why are you called Romeo? A member of the family that I hate. You do that. Although it has been totally, been being totally pricky. Romeo is just his Christian name, isn't it? And it's not an issue. Is his surname that's the problem? Well, yes. Actually, it's sort of hoping people will notice that. I think they might. Duh. So you think she would say, Montague, Montague, where well, art thou, Montague? No, because that would sound like she's got lost her cat. Look, it's probably best that we leave this to me, my love. I am a bit of a role, a pitly pleased with the comedy scene. A group of rivals serving men, a strange series of increasingly obscure insults. Well, I told you, don't do comedy. Well, I told you, don't do comedy. Not your strong point. It is my strong point, wife. It just requires a lengthy explanation. Copious footnotes. If you know, do your research, my stuff is actually very funny. So excited to hear that about Mr. Shakespeare's teen romance. So it's a good idea for a story. Yeah, it's all right, I suppose. Better than his usual stuff. Has he let slip his hints about romantic pot? Ah, his lad, he falls in love with his lass. She falls in with him. And they happily live after that. Live happily after that. Live happy ever after. Nice and short, which makes a change from his Henry's. An amazing part for a girl. 
Kate, you've got to drop that. Just because my mum rents rooms in a time master doesn't mean he's going to put you in one of his plays. Just means to, it seems unfair for you to play men to form female roles. I'm a real woman and ready, ready and eager. Oh, Kate, splendid. Start on those new pages in my bureau, would you? And bottom, bring ale and pie. A good morning would be nice. I'm famished. The coach promised a refreshment cart, but oh no, not on this particular service. You'd be stunned to hear. I hate it when they do they do that. Plus they furring nuts, Twix, Sturridge, and Kitten Chicken Norton are laid on replacement donkeys. In fact, one doggy, six of of us, plus bags. Of course, the choice brute guffed a lot last. After what, about three furlongs, they had to send for another from Birmingham. He spent two nights in a hedge. We did, we did see a single, we didn't see a single rut being filed. Oh no, I'm forgetting, is it London? One wouldn't, wouldn't more likely see a toothless crone, a tooth man with an English rut look filler, actually filling a rut. Fortunately, he had a quilt and an ink, and I was able to make a passing ruse for the time. Oh my God, Francis Shakespeare is brilliant, timeless, deathless, the most magical history of Romeo and Julian. Oh yes, it could be, this should be Juliet, obviously. Romeo and Julian was a bit of a working title. Early expertory, early expertory stuff. I mean, if nothing, yeah, right. What? Well, come on, master. We live in the same, same house. Heard you reading out your sonnets, especially one that one just, and three, six. The poems about a platonic, heretical relationship. Gods, naughty etchings. Why does anyone presume? Because I write 156, 20 other poems. I, I am an attractive boy. I must be, it must be some kind of charmed hugger, tugger. I, it's an utterly amazing part. Yes, I think I got her voice. She have, you have, you have, you have, she's perfect. Real challenge would be to find an actor to do her justice. Master Goodwill was quite brilliant as Mar- Queen Margaret in my Henry's. But I fear the too old to play the Indian Queen. I mean, I don't want a boy. Those crazy, discolored squeakers. Like death for him. Pardon, Kate. Leaving him for Fibrium, caught in a ruby pie, which starts with a swallow, but the nose not now to birds. Pardon? I think he means, have you got a frog in your throat? Do you ever, never be sure of him? I get it. Is there anyone else ever going to, going to? Yes, bottom. I oh, totally, I get it. And you could write a play and use a mer- monkey. Money you seem to pay me. Except, hang on, you won't work because you can't read or write. So perhaps I would discourage the current discouragement of the spirit of creation of labour. Sensible, advocate one. That means that is a um, what was I hinting? The answer of your Juliet could be, dilemma could be, oh, Kate, don't go there. The acting is illegal. Besides, which girl, besides which girls can't act? Just as they cannot practice law, cure the stick, handle financial matters, or stand for any office. But no woman be allowed to do, try any of these things, because they can't do them. Good bookings, Kate. What's not to get? Now, please forget this nonsense and get me, let me focus. It's not Juliet I'm worried about, it's Romeo. Can't seem to get a handle on him. His character just eludes me. Master Mitt, Robert Green is on out. Robert Green, who isn't one of the hate my gutlings. What does he want? Ah, Master Shanky Poet. A word, if you please, my Shakespeare. Mr. Greeny, my name is Shakespeare. I know it's your name, Sir Era. As a put addressing you, my trade, shaky poet. Just as I would dress my house builder, builder as Mr. Pup Builder, or co- Carpenter, she's called her Master Carpenter. What would you call a bell, bell, bear beater? Mr. Green, Master Beater. See what he did there? Brilliant, loved it. Can you come on a mission to great see My uncle, my nephew, Florian Green, a fully, most unlikely girl, unfortunately, suitable girl, Lady Rosaline, daughter of me, County Knight. And of course, to be no question such a lovely match, so the boy must be kept from her. And what part of this effacing tale of upper class entitlement is of is interest to me, for her in troubles to Cambridge next week, you have to take his place at the university. You must keep him there until then. You see this lovely boarding house is far from court. 
Miss Rosalind will never find him there. Here, I am a busy writer somewhere. Serene, what should I do this? Because I'm a master of the Queen's rebels. If you don't, I'll deny your plays license. You mean you can corruptly using your public position to further your own private interests? Uh huh. I will have the boy send a boy to you as bought, bought right tight for his blood runs hot. I shall return in a week of farewell dinner. Goodbye, day sounds. I'm due at the theatre. It's because my new romance. But I must play nursey, nursey, wipey nosey to votering, roastering, servant, chop, chop hammer. Oh, because Robert Green by me made, be made master of revels. Why well, be the master of revels? What qualifies me to be my judge? Posh, he married to Cambridge for exactly. His very birth did guarantee his advancement. Whereas minutes, mine precluded it. If all this affair was suspended, this sick turn, all turning See, made of grass, against which man of lower birth, such as I, and always, must always bonk or bark nunkins. Do you think that why we're going, going, you're going a bit bald? I'm not going bloody bald. I have a big brain, Mr. Burridge. I'm a senior actor of female roles in this company. My dear Cadell, Eugene, the master of Shakespeare's promised play, is a maid of thirteen summers, a young broad, scared, Yet in bloom, and your point, I think it seeks an actor that does have to shave his ears. Good morrow, good morrow all. Don't you not, don't you good morrow me, Shakespeare. It's your romance, your writing, I, Romeo Julien, Juliet, as I said, Romeo and Juliet. But he says you want me to play some nanny, bloody nanny. A nice is a bloody co- fine comedy role. Oh, comedy? Don't, 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 don't give it to him then. I can do comedy. Yeah, but only in London, yeah. Not really Florence, is it? Well, yes, well, you know, you worked in Italy, Kemp. Oh, did you get a award? Can't remember. Oh, that's right, I did. Yeah. Probably not English, Italian, yeah. Comedy in Italy. I heard of it. Seems to be because it was big in Italy, Kempy. It's indescribable smuggling, smuggling, haste thou uh, become. Yeah, but an insufferable smuggling. Who big in Italy? I'm a senior leading actor. I insist on playing Romeo and Juliet. Look, the play isn't finished. I'm stuck on the character of my Romeo. As more and more as yet, I haven't had an end and ending. Surely, in long, long words, will live happily after ever. Hmm? Well, that's an obvious ending, yes. Ending the crowd will want, yes. I thought I'd kill him instead. Kill him? Our teenage sweethearts, yes. Fear it would be challenging and entertaining. Many changing. Oh, just need to work out the double death plot. I can do dying. I'm good at dying. Oh, yeah, on stage every night. Oh, who said that? Oh, I did. So, Mr. Shakespeare. And he's well. I can, can woo with Romeo. I know I can. Let me show you. Find a way to, me to prove it. Bit sad, though, begging. I do delivery. Look, uh, beef in my elbow. Tell the poor to bar their doors. We unleash the most fantastic p- creature and Christian English push boy. Stay your hands for a moment, bottom. Have you a dagger handy? Do you think he's dangerous? Possibly. These expert jobbos are extremely strong. Have you spent their entire lives with literally enough to eat? They join clubs called the Bust, Bellarax, and Fisted Peasant. When they gorge and fight and rudge and quaff, all they coat the coat. Walls of cut porridge. I was a little bit jealous, are we? Bloody jealous, particularly when they graduate. They can get to the bishops and, all, and get to the bishops and ambassadors and, and members of Privy Council in London. I'm afraid he's not. What do you know? Is what you did farm animal animals. You rogered in that university. It can put it off no longer. At least the press boy, Rosalind, Rosalind. Where art thou, Rosalind? Goodness. He's just spooky. He's actually way, why his beloved name is Rosalind. Actually, I think he's asking her where Rosalind is. Probably best to leave the critic breath interpretation of me. Where are you, Rosalind? Where are you? I knew, I knew you were, you where you were. Gonna admit, I'm right, I'll oh, love. Despise love. 
Now is the anger fallen upon the false rose. I am a prick. Blimey, we've got to spend a week with this ass mongrel. Is this your fagrous injections, bottom? I see this love long loon, a very model of my Romeo. A rude and deceiving tablet, four legs has thou, yet none of Rosaline's. I cut off every one, and eat upon the floor, but one glance of Rosaline's sweet knees. I'm oh, sorry, but this bloke's of total wankering. You must take me a glance as youth in a door. Curse at the floor that doth not support Rosaline. Curse the scenes that doth not shelter Rosaline. Curse the bondsman that doth not serve Rosaline. Well, maybe he's a bit of a wankering. Sarah, Sarah, I know you are. My name is William Shakespeare, Master Florine. I challenge you with keeping you safe till you go to the universe and never. I leave this place at once and search the world until I find my Rosalind. Afraid, is that the question? That I shall kill, will kill myself. Was an infant, Rosalind, where well, thou art thou, Rosalind? Mr. Shakespeare, I learned one of Juliet's speeches. And you get, let me show you that, that Kate, I am really, really busy. What's the name? I shall we call, what shall we, which we call Rose by any other name? The smell is sweet. Not now, Kate, sorry. Now, Master Florian, don't be foolish. You're going to have to get Rosalind out of your mind. Rosalind, Rosalind. Who is this foul child at Rosalind? Why you love, why you love, I thought. Kate, Kate, be my love. I will love none but my Kate, Kate. You mean, you mean, oh, Kate? Where she breathes, flowers bloom. Where she sings, pexy dance. She bursts blowingly fraudulent. Fatty birthday. No more sweetly scented than all the perfumes of that Arabia. Well, you see, you see, you're wrong there. She's not a bad looking bird. But let me tell you, she leaves her one hanging in the room. She's still chewing it for an hour later. My Kate doesn't teach the candles to burn bright. Kate, Kate, zone is. I got to get some of this stuff down. My, it's my Romeo right. Then a quick bit of luck. Got him going old Dodrin's deli. Oh, and then over old Kate. Who thought that he's a jailer? I'd be better chains to keep him here. Close to the nose of love. Shakespeare? I mean, quite interesting has just happened. Yes, I know, Kate. Master Florian is taking a shine to you. Just sing along for a week. Will you? Let him relieve your being when he writes you sonnets. That sort of thing. I'm sure this is nothing serious. It's quite serious. He's asked me to marry him. Well, well, that's very sweet, Mary. He cannot marry you. Robert Green thought. Rosaline was not good enough for his precious Florlean. He is the daughter of a knight. Your mum washes up my puffy, puffing pants. Yes, that is not Richard Green who will marry me of this Florlean. And when does he does, my station will be somewhat elevated considerably. I must add above your own. But my Kate, but Kate, if you marry Florian, his uncle will blame me. I never license another of my plays. Mm, it's not my problem, though, is it? Particularly since you let me play Juliet, even though I'm brilliant. You're brilliant. It's my dream. But Kate, you know very well it's illegal for girls to do anything interesting. That's not any recourse to marry. We will be very rich, very, very rich, we sort of idiots. Then we're all better, bottom. We have to stop this marriage. We must attain the distract the boy. Why? That should be difficult. A rainy little ponce fences anything who's skirt. That's right, it's a course. So we need to do is need to find someone, a skirt, who you definitely can't marry. Oh my god, it's so obvious. Woo, what the masters. See here, I am mistress sauce. Quickly, a shy but biddable young maid. It's all ripe and hot and drippy. Players? She craves her true love's joy with a hey ho and a wind and rain. We do a lot for my handsome boy, the maid as he bonketh every day. Well, Master Florine, what do you think of Mistress Sauce quickly? Does she not make your lines tremble, your copies cry wolf wolf? Are you blind? She looks like a man in a dress, besides. But my cape. Ah, uh, but keep me pure and chaste. To draw it to wed, your mistress so quickly does promise. A little before dinner. But not a bad point, actually. Good, sweet, good night, this bid of love. By summer's ripening beneath my prove a beauteous flower, where next we meet, good night. Good night to sweet repose and rest. Come thy heart within my breast. Sorry, mistress, so quickly. What does it? That does it. 
Kate's the one for me. I shall stand beneath Kate's balcony and strum my flute. <coughs> Is that a figure of speech? Don't let the watchman catch you. Oh, well, in that case, perhaps I should play with some uh, some music. I should be angry with you for pinching my lines like that. You do them rather well. The verse is so beautiful. Look, Kate, crazy it sounds. Perhaps Juliet would be better played by a girl. And so, if I were some point to try, I might say, try to help you become an actor. Would you prefer that to marrying a Mr. Purvey puts by? Or oh, Mrs. Shakespeare, you know I would. But I am promised now. They're binding in law. You might come up with a plan to get his boy to come and give up you up. I got a cooker even better than a middle aged man in lipstick. Yes, even better than that. Great, good and old book, got see. Good for the end of my arse, though. Dark night for business. Perhaps that business be dark also. Yes, well, I suppose it'd be a bit. My friend loves a girl. I see my master. His friend is spotted called Dangle, a milky discharge, not at all. Take back spit and coat, snot, a rather pun you fiend. Your friends are a protracher, and not pox. I mean, need a simple potion. A random person, seemingly dead, but we, with which they will fully recover, a proximate moment. Well, we have play dead. Hey, else you could buy my bum brand of mixture, which is exactly the same. Half a price. I think I'll stick to the popular brand, thank you. I'm happy to pay a little more for the numerous sense of comfort of Brabant brand and boots. Mr. Fullerin, I come with a message from your true love, Kate. I say, if you speak Kate's words, then you, then you are oh, her mouth. Oh, uh, not really. I just, I must kiss thee. So it's not confused or controversial. Oh, ah, uh, your breath does stink like you're dying on a dung. Just, Deliver your message and be done. Mrs. Kate's are gone to the local chapel. Her countenance is dark and wild. I fear some menace has come upon her. He called for you, master. Harry, lace you late too late. Right, Kate, your swig the potion. Florine finds you, thinks you're dead and breaks off the engagement. Don't see how it can possibly go wrong. Well to play, Juliet, but soft. It comes so dark, so dark. I fear my love's not here, for stilly her bright eyes will be a lantern in that gloom knob. What's this? My cape lies cold. Does she sleep? She is, no, she's dead. Not shall we, no, now we should say. Oh well, bad luck. I'm just going to forget about her and go to Cambridge, poisoned. Dead from poison, dead. Oh well, win while some win, lose some. Pretty some totty. More totty into Cambridge. If Kate be dead, and Florine must not live. Perchance some tragic trace of poison, a linger on lips, a kiss, a share of fate, blimey, it's taken a bit harder than I expected, and yet so no, no friendly drop remains. Perchance she did brush her teeth, a gargle after break, drinking it. That's the dagger I die. Oh no, she's not dead, the potion only makes her seem dead. <coughs> she wakes up any second by vinegrong, she dies. Now cracks the noble's heart. Good night, sweet idiot. The heart was big, the brain tiny. Shy if they wake. Don't. Did the plan work? Did Florine find my still body? Think me dead in the park for Cambridge with a shrug? Well, two out of three. Ain't bad. Right now, good. <coughs> Don't panic. We have a deal with it. We could deal with this. We must. We need another brilliant plan. Welcome must agree to young Florine's farewell feast. Buy it in his company and fetch just quick. So let's quickly have joined join us to make a merry evening. Excellent, excellent. Come, Florine, embrace your uncle. He makes, he looks half dead. He is, Master Green. He is a bit of a serious restraint. Young Florine, Florine, last night. Buckets of oysters, sterols of ale. Come, sir, you hand. Good lad. So cold, stiff, unbearing, bending. Just as a good gentleman should be. Dinner is served as my master's. Shall we? So he, so he said to my John Hemmings, lonely, lovely actor, sweet man, I said, Johnny, have you ever played Grandma Grandma's Needle? He said, I played Grandma Gretchen Ducky, but the needle come from my props. <coughs> Brilliant, boy, I've already said there's nothing more fascinating than actors talking about themselves. Tell us more about Florine. Does he not touch thy food? 
Virtues must be rough and good. And other staff can't keep up this much longer. Let's go for it. Tell me, Florine, have you seen anything of the cafe of Rosaline? Or once you did love so well, Rosaline? Who's Rosaline? You said you loved me. Your Kate, your Kate, your love, Kate. Thou did say you did love me. Or oh, is so quickly. But I've all led, I see you in muttering. A vanity man, vanity man should. I am master of Mr. Shakespeare, seeing so you have cured my nephew. Who is so noted for romance? Well, yes, I think you say we've done that. Bravo. I look. What's this? Well, he's passed out is his plate. You think he, think he's at the Cambridge already? Look at the Cambridge. Well, it's surprising they find him not cold, uncooperative, and expecting advancement without effort or talent. He's sure the perfect member of the English establishment. Though he is composed long before he graduates. Imagine he'll get a first. Amazing tale, husband. Particularly a bit about a maid drugging himself in a tomb. Are you for young love to think he de- dead? And kill himself before you she wakes up, yes. If only you could think of an ending of my play as easily.